Each of us has a solemn duty to remember and honor our fallen. Today I'd like to take a moment to read to you a short speech written by Major Michael Davis O'Donnell in 1970. It is titled, Remember Them. If you are able, save for them a place inside of you and one backward glance when you are leaving for the places they can no longer go. Be not ashamed to say you love them, though you may or may not always have. Take what they have left and what they have taught you with their dying and keep it with your own. And in that time when men decide and feel safe to call the war insane, take one moment to embrace those gentle heroes you left behind. Three months later, Major O'Donnell was killed in action. Perhaps we should not mourn the soldiers who died, but rather thank God that such brave souls had lived. And so please bow your heads. Heavenly Father, throughout our nation today, millions of people will come to you in their own way and understanding of you. We pray that those families who have lost loved ones find peace in your grace. As we ourselves salute fallen comrades in arms, note the empty chair at our table or the lone flag flying in deep respect. Please help us to never forget the debt we owe those bravest of warriors who never hesitated to stand between us and the darkness. Amen. Thank you, Steve, for those thoughtful words. My name is Colonel Martha Monroe, and I, along with the Veterans Grave Committee members, Tom Zavorsky and Patty Bolton, and all the other local veterans with me today, thank you for helping us honor our brothers and sisters in arms who sacrificed their lives through duty to this great country. I'm honored today to lead the ceremony, which has been made more meaningful by your participation and show of support. I would like to start by thanking all of you for taking the time today to take a moment to reflect on what today is all about. Every year, the town of Stowe puts forth the effort to honor American heroes who have paid the highest price to ensure our freedoms. Specifically, we honor the fallen heroes that have hailed from our small town, which shows that American heroes are all around us and that any person from any town can make an impact on ensuring freedom for all Americans. Freedom isn't free. There is most certainly a cost as we, a country, must be willing to fund in order to ensure that brave men and women of the U.S. military have the training and the equipment that they need to establish and accomplish their mission. While these things are important for our national security, the people that put on the uniform are the most precious resource in our fight for freedom. Today's young people continue to sign up for service to their country and they are writing a blank check to all of you to help protect your freedom. They are willing to go to the far reaches of the globe to ensure that our safety here at home and in any small town such as Stowe is protected. Each year, the United States suffers many casualties in the ongoing battle to ensure our way of life. Instead of getting lost in numbers and statistics, there's really only one number that matters. One. Any death is a family changed forever. Yet brave citizens continue to commit themselves to the country and to our security, knowing that they may have to make the greatest sacrifice of all. I wish that we will not ever need to inscribe another fallen soldier's name on this or any other memorial wall across America. And I'm sure everyone here shares that same sentiment. Maintaining that hope is only a start to what we can do to honor our fallen heroes. We can do so much more to honor their memory and sacrifice, and many of them are simple. We can honor their sacrifice with something as simple as voting, thereby participating in our country's processes and make, taking full advantage of the freedoms that they have fought and died for. We can continue to thank our uniformed military personnel when we see them, understanding the gravity of their commitment to our freedom and how five simple words, thank you for your service, can show them that their commitment to you is greatly appreciated. 
and we can continue to support events like this. From the youngest Brownie and Cub Scout to the senior Civil Air Patrol cadet next to me and the Scout members, our young people are learning what it means to honor those who have fallen in duty into our country. Dedicating a small portion of your holiday weekend is not only showing our great thanks and appreciation to those who have already made the uniform sacrifice, but also to show others that may follow in our footsteps and their footsteps that we will always remember what they have done for us and our country. In a moment, we will read the names of Stowe's town heroes. I ask that you understand that these are not just names inscribed on a wall, but they are our neighbors, our friends, our parents, husbands, wives, and even our children. Let us not only remember them, but keep in mind their families who will be forever changed. Their sacrifice was not in vain, for we are still here enjoying our freedom to enjoy our lives and enjoy this day. We've set aside this day to honor them and to celebrate them with gatherings of our family, our friends, food, and joy. They can rest peacefully knowing that we realize that we owe them a tremendous debt of gratitude and that we will never forget them. Will Commander Jeff Lance now come forward to place the reef? The names of the Stowe residents killed in action while serving their country will now be read by Lieutenant Colonel Mike Travelant and Miss Patty Bolton. From the French and Indian War, Ephraim Brown, Ebenezer Gates, Abel Ray, Isaac Taylor, Stephen Putin. From the Revolutionary War, John Gordon, Benjamin Gates, Daniel Gates, Ephraim Gates, Stephen Hale. From the Civil War, Amasa Arnold, Winfield H. Benham, John Brown, John Alpheus Brown, Frank Burns, Thomas Cunningham, Edward Andrew Davidson, William Henry Dunlap, Amos S. Eastman, Samuel Hampton, James Keene, Albert Mordo Kinsbury, Dr. Paul Kittredge, Cornelius Long, Daniel Artemis Lovering, Matthew McCauley, Francis William Moore, Albion Nutting, George Whitmarsh Parks, Charles F. Perry, Luther Felton Reed, James Rye, Abraham Foster Rogers, George E. Simpson, Matthew Smith, Joseph Albert Swift, Owen Taylor, Albert Walcott, George Franklin Wickham, James Henry Whitcomb, Thomas Whitman, Henry Windsor Wilder, George Willis. From World War I, Frank Edward Doyle, Perry Wolcott Halleck, Charles Walter Penny, Richard Ernst Trumpold, Warren Wheeler Weatherby. From World War II, Jerome Donovan, Wilho Allen Pakala. From the Vietnam War, Richard Wagner Frank II. Flight 10, huh. present humps.
order Holmes. At ease. Lincoln's Gettysburg Address will now be read by Mr. Ben Martin, an eighth grade student at Hale Middle School. Four score and seven years ago, our, fa our fathers brought forth on this continent a new nation, conceived in liberty and dedicated to the proposition that all men are created equal. Now we are engaged in a great civil war, testing whether that nation, or any nation, so conceived and so dedicated, can long endure. We are met on a great battlefield of that war. We have come to dedicate a portion of that field as a final resting place for those who here gave their lives that that nation might live. It is altogether fitting and proper that we should do this. But in a larger sense, we cannot dedicate, we cannot consecrate, we cannot hallow this ground. The brave men, living and dead, who struggle here have consecrated it far above our poor power to add or detract. The world will little note nor long remember what we say here, but it can, ne it can never forget what they did here. It is for us the living, rather, to be dedicated here to the unfinished work which they who fought here have thus far so nobly advanced. It is rather for us to be here dedicated to the great task remaining before us, that from these honored dead, we take increased devotion to the cause which they gave the last full measure of devotion. That we here highly resolve that these dead shall not have died in vain. That this nation under God shall have a new birth of freedom. And that government of the people, by the people, for the people, shall not perish from the earth. Thank you, Ben. Now we ask that the center school first graders who have grown flowers to please place the flowers on one of the graves marked with a flag with assistance from your parents, or you can come up and have a veteran come help you as well. everyone now please rise and come to attention for the playing of our national anthem by the Neshoba Regional High School Band. Flight 10 Hut present Humps. <laughs> At ease. <laughs> Will Hill Middle School student Miss Cecilia Trippi now step forward to read a poem by Dr. Bill McDonald. To all of our veterans far and near, we thank you for your service for all those years. You sacrificed your time and some gave your life. You preserved our freedom by willingly paying the price. Many of you were sent overseas. You were wounded in battle with scars and disease. But courageous and brave, you weathered the storm. You faced every battle with faith and beyond. We honor you with joy for all that you've done. You stood strong for our country, for our daughters and sons. So no one stands alone. We walk hand in hand. Remember, we are with you. Together we shall stand. 
We salute you today, hear what we say. Let our words speak eloquently in this special way. On this Memorial Day, let us express our love and thanks for the sacrifice you paid. You served in honor for many years and days, and we will never forget how you were strong and brave. I'd like to now introduce Senator Eldridge to step forward and say a few words. He strives to strengthen and improve services for injured and ill vets. Veterans rely on these services and it's important to ensure that they are taken care of. Good afternoon. I wanna thank Colonel Monroe uh, Stowe, veterans agent for inviting me here to say a few words. It's an honor to be here with Gold Star Mothers, veterans, the Stowe Board of Selectmen, Representative Kate Hogan, and I wanna thank the adult and student volunteers for making this special ceremony here in Stowe possible. It is a beautiful and solemn occasion for Memorial Day. Today we stand here to celebrate the lives of the countless soldiers who have made the ultimate sacrifice in fighting to preserve the American way of life. As a nation and as a commonwealth, we have a commitment to protect the memories of all American heroes who are themselves dedicated to preserve the freedom we have to safely enjoy our lives with our friends and family, including today. Our thoughts also extend to the families who have lost their loved ones. We should take a moment to remember in addition, all of our soldiers who are stationed around the world, helping protect vulnerable populations while helping rebuild communities and others. American troops all over the world help build schools, hospitals, and so much more to promote our American values. Let's remember our brave soldiers who have made the ultimate sacrifice for all of us. As a nation, we do a very good job of remembering our fallen with memorials and dedications. But I do think we have to do a much better job of honoring their sacrifice and service with policies to help veterans, survivors, families, and our entire nation. As a legislator, I meet with many veterans and families of soldiers. Someone who is left behind often by a systemic problem. And on a day of celebration, it is critical whether we're talking about housing, healthcare, workforce training, we need to better support our veterans and the survivors of those who gave their lives for our freedoms. I am committed to using every power of our government to make sure that no man or woman is left behind. Massachusetts history, as you heard from the names of Stowe residents who have given their lives for our freedoms, has a long, proud history of fighting America's wars, going back to the French and Indian War, and of course, the Revolutionary War. It's important to remember on this day what some of those freedoms are. Many of them found in the First Amendment of the United States Constitution. The freedom of speech, the freedom to say whatever we wish, including to criticize our government officials. The freedom of religion, to practice whatever religion we wish. The right to assemble, to gather together, such as we are now, for any purpose. And the right to petition your government for your grievances. The sacrifices of the men and women who have given their lives are made all the more sacred, all the more special, and all the more unique because of these American freedoms. I want to thank the brave men and women for their sacrifices. It is an honor to be here with you today in Stell. Thank you very much. I'd like to now introduce State Representative Hogan. Kate is a resident of Stowe and a key advocate for legislation that supports veterans and their families. With the support of people like Kate, legislation is improved for our veterans. Welcome. Welcome everyone. Welcome and gratitude to Commander Martha Monroe, members of the Stowe Cemetery Committee for making this happen every year, Stowe Fire Department Color Guard, Stowe Boys and Girl Scouts, the Shoba Regional Marching Band, the Stowe Minutemen, Civil Air Patrol, Pompo First Graders, and the Stowe Garden Club, and our elected officials and honored guests. And to all our veterans here today, a grateful Commonwealth thanks you for your service and your sacrifice. And today I am thinking of the 75th anniversary of D-Day. As Andy Rooney said so well, if you think the world is selfish and rotten, 
Go to the cemetery overlooking Omaha Beach. See what one group of men did for another group on D-Day, June 6, 1944. On June 6, 1944, Allied forces invaded no northern France by landing on the beaches of Normandy, codenamed Utah, Omaha, Gold, Juno, and Sword. This was the largest seaborne invasion in history and the beginning of the end of World War II. But nearly 2,500 Americans died on the beaches that day. Now and forever, these young men remain the essence of all that is great about our country, and it is their lives we grieve and their decency, courage, and bravery we honor today. Their lives are part of the true message of Memorial Day. We cannot separate the story of American freedom from the story of American sacrifice. At 18, 19, and 20 years old, these soldiers, still boys really, arrived in places with far away sounding names. They carried a gun and a knapsack and a profound sense of what was at stake, nothing less than freedom as we knew it. So as we remember the 75th anniversary of D-Day and the invasion of Normandy, let us honor what is most remarkable about these stories. They are not just about our freedoms. These stories of world wars are about that defining character of America, fighting for freedom and liberty wherever it is threatened. Because today, across Europe and Asia, and North Africa, individuals who do not know the names of our fathers, your grandfathers, or brothers, do know and live in freedom. And these faraway places are where a small American flag placed before an austere white gravestone is the measure of what was sacrificed for their freedoms. At American military cemeteries across the globe, People play tribute to these heroes from places with far away sounding names, places like Massachusetts. I am reminded of our shared memory of the French people who line the liberated streets after D-Day with reverence and gratitude for American bravery and sacrifice. Our trucks and troops rolling through the streets were a symbol that the Yanks had arrived to deliver back the freedom stolen by the Nazis. Many of you have visited some of these American military cemeteries overseas. The stark tribute of thousands of white crosses in fields ringed by trees at the edge of cities and along the Atlantic coast. These American cemeteries are living memories of the profound human toll of sacrifice, fighting for the universal ideal of freedom very far from home. We have never, as a people, lost our freedom. And I say this again because sometimes it occurs to me and it is so moving. We have never, as a people, lost our freedom. But we have been willing to fight and die for our allies and our friends. In Lorraine, France, 10,482 American burials. In Cambridge, England, 3,812. In Henri Chapelle, Belgium, 7,992. In Sicily, Italy, 7,992. In Normandy, 9,387. Less than a week away from the 75th anniversary of D-Day, we can be sure that for residents in Sicily and Cambridge and Normandy, we will be remembered. So let us join together today in remembering the valor and bravery with which our fallen fought for the freedom of others. We must appreciate that to be an American today, 75 years after our troops faced down fire at Normandy in one of the darkest periods of our nation's history is to know that freedom grows and is protected when it is shared. From our earliest days of the Republic, the United States has always been willing to fight for our freedoms and the freedoms of people around the world. And on this Memorial Day, 
Let us commit to a town, a commonwealth, and a country worthy of our heroes. God bless y'all and God bless America. Thank you. Thank you, Kate. This is an announcement for our veterans and their families. Carol Callahan, benefits specialist of the Metro West Manager and uh, Northeast Veterans Outreach Center will speak on June 11th at the Pompo Community Center. Ms. Callahan is a national accredited service officer with the Vietnam Veterans of America for the last 15 years. She has assisted the hundreds of veterans across the state to secure their earned benefits with the Department of Veteran Affairs. Ms. Callahan is employed by Northeast Veterans Outreach Center where she runs the Metro West office. This event is co-sponsored by the Stowe Veterans Service Officer and the Stowe Council on the Aging. It is free and open to all Stowe veterans regardless of their age. The event will begin at 6.30 p.m. with Ms. Callahan speaking at 7. This event is a great way to get to know fellow veterans and is a welcoming, casual atmosphere. It is an opportunity for the Veterans Service Officer to furnish information, advice, and assistance, as well as answer any questions you may have. Let us now bow our heads in prayer. God of love, we honor those who have died in service to our nation. We pray for peace for all the nations and all people. We thank you for being with those brave souls in their last hours and helping them to be courageous on the battlefield in order to protect our freedom. We thank you for taking them into your arms and providing them with the peace that they deserve and the sacrifice of life they made. We ask that their sacrifices are not in vain and that liberty, justice, freedom, and peace will prevail for all mankind. Amen. I'd like to now take a moment to recognize the many people and groups that have made today and this ceremony possible. Please hold your applause till the end. Thank you to Senator Eldridge for your support to our town and taking the time to share with us on this ceremony with the ceremony today. State Representative Hogan for your support to our town, school districts, and the district veterans. The selectmen for the time you give to support the town and your attendance. Mr. Tom Savorsky for help with the preparing of the ceremony and other veterans here today for your participation in the parade and the ceremony. Fire Chief Joe Landry and Fire Department for our color guard. Police Chief Bill Bosworth and the Stowe Police for controlling traffic. Louise Peacock and the other members of the Stowe Garden Club for the ceremony wreaths and flowers along the monument. The Stowe First Graders for their flowers. The Boy Scouts and Girl Scouts, children and parents that help with the flag refresh and the veteran marker cleanup at Brookside Cemetery early Saturday morning. The Stowe Minuteman Company for their patriotic music and gun salute, as well as the veteran flag refresh at the Hilltop and Lower Village Cemeteries. The Neshoba Regional High School Band under the leadership of Joe McCarthy for their patriotic music, taps, and drum majors. Hale students Cecilia Trippi and Ben Martin for their readings. Major Johnson, Commander of the Civil Air Patrol and the Cadets for participating. The Stowe TV for making the parade available for those who cannot attend in person. G.H. Gledhill and the cemetery staff for preparing the three cemeteries for today. And finally, Ms. Mabel Hollick, who established the cemetery funds to purchase flowers for the war memorials. Let's please give everyone a round of applause. I know we've changed the, uh, the format of the, the parade and the ceremony a little bit this year. Uh, now we will form back up and march to the Stowe Library 
to place the wreaths at the memorials there.